Durbin, Ranking Member Grassley, um, and thank you, Secretary Mayorkas, for your um, thoughtful answers today, for your leadership uh, in what is such a broad area of responsibility. And the Department of Homeland Security faces an enormous range of challenges, from uh, cyber crimes to climate change to migration to domestic terrorism. Um, there's a very wide range of things uh, we could be discussing today. Let me focus on a few. Um, what I most appreciate about your leadership on the very challenging issues of uh, immigration is your recognition that smart and effective enforcement must also be and can be consistent with our values, uh, with treating people who come to this country humanely, um, even as you are trying to enforce our immigration laws and ensure um, border security. Um, so let's start with the question of prosecutorial discretion, um, an approach that effectively makes any undocumented immigrant a priority is actually making no one a priority. Um, you're proposing um, prioritization, um, using prosecutorial discretion to, to strike priorities. Why is that needed? Can you explain why an approach of having priorities is actually more humane and more effective? Thank you very much, uh, Senator. There are two reasons, and let me uh, first at the outset say that the concept of prosecutorial discretion has guided federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies for years and years. Uh, when I was an assistant United States attorney, that principle guided us under the U.S. Attorney's Manual. There are two reasons in the, co in the context uh, of immigration enforcement. Number one, we have limited resources, and if we do not establish priorities, we will not accomplish our mission most effectively of securing the well-being of the American public. Number two, there are more than 12 million unlawfully present individuals in the United States, many of whom have been in this country for years and years and have been contributing members of our society. One example, just one example, are the individuals who do the backbreaking work of picking food that arrives on our table every day. And so it is not only a matter of allocating resources smartly and effectively, but it is also a matter of justice. Uh, let me ask um, an additional question, if I might, about uh, our role in Congress um, in um, contributing to resolving uh, our broken immigration system. Um, there's areas where our interests in strong border management and humane treatment of migrants can and should align. Um, creating an orderly process at ports of entry would disempower smugglers and help protect the safety of migrants. Addressing multi-year asylum backlogs will give migrants some stability while avoiding unhelpful incentives. And you've taken a whole range of initiatives, um, restarting, for example, the Central American Miners Refugee and Parole Program, which creates a safe pathway um, for applying for refugees in the United States, increasing the number of H-2B visas to a broader range of countries, creating opportunities for legal migration, improving the expedited removal process, um, creating a dedicated docket. Um, I think there's lots of things we can and should do to build a safe, fair, and humane immigration system consistent with the rule of law, but we have to have patience to invest in the long term and willingness to make some fundamental changes. How do you think we in Congress can support your efforts through legislation? Senator, um, you described the number of efforts that we have underway, um, promulgating them through policy as well as through regulation. The enduring, the enduring solution is immigration legislation um, to fix our broken system, uh, to bring ref much needed reforms to our asylum system and to every aspect uh, of our immigration system so that the best and brightest, as Senator uh, Klobuchar referenced, the individuals who can provide so much prosperity and create American uh, jobs who bring their talents and their energies to this country actually have an ability to remain here and make those contributions. It's across the board in achieving the goals of family unity, economic prosperity, and humanitarian relief. The opportunities are tremendous. They have existed for many, many years, and I do hope Congress promulgates legislation for that enduring solution. Well, at the very outset of this hearing, Chairman Durbin, um, commented that, of course, he's concerned about the situation at the border, but we in Congress must act 
Um, simply grandstanding and finger pointing isn't going to solve a broken immigration system um, that has been an, an enduring problem over the entire decade I've served here across three different administrations. Let me move to the situation of our Afghan allies, which uh, it should not be a partisan issue to welcome to the United States tens of thousands of Afghans who served alongside us. Um, in the recent continuing resolution, we passed with very broad bipartisan support provisions to give Afghan parolees the resettlement benefits of refugees. I recently led a bipartisan delegation to visit Qatar and Germany um, to visit with Afghan uh, refugees and to thank uh, American service members, diplomats, uh, and our allies and partners uh, who've helped make this happen. My own home church is helping alongside Jewish Family Services in Delaware to welcome one of the first Afghan refugee families into Delaware. And we've got a lot of important work to do all over our country. This can and should be bipartisan. President Biden actually has before him this week for signature a bill I led with Senator Cornyn. Um, they would better protect federal law enforcement and employees overseas, including our Afghan allies. Um, as Senator Klobuchar mentioned, I think this is an area that with bipartisan support, we can make great progress. Can you briefly say more about how Congress, through legislation, can bolster your effort to support Afghans? Uh, Senator Coons, um, uh, we are grateful for the support that Congress already has provided um, uh, that you referenced. And I should say, Operation Allies Welcome is something uh, that has received support from both uh, parties, irrespective of party affiliation across uh, this country. Uh, we hope uh, that further legislation could indeed uh, be passed that provides uh, for these individuals uh, a path to status in the United States. Well, thank you. And I'm grateful for the service of Jack Markell, the former governor of Delaware, who is helping lead the coordination of Operation Allies. Welcome, I'm grateful for your leadership and the men and women of DHS in helping facilitate this critical effort. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Coons. Senator Cruz.